Yes, this is the House Healthcare Committee. It's Thursday, March 25th, and it's 1 p.m. And we are gathering to hear from uh, Representative Kevin Christie, Coach Christie, uh, on an amendment that he has distributed to members for as a, an amendment to House Bill 210 for this afternoon. And so I'm going to ask uh, Colleen and Kate, or actually, uh, Katie McLynn is the draft person. Um, and Coach Christie, if you maybe you could have uh, uh, the language put on the screen uh, and give me one minute. I need to. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, if you'd like to do a walkthrough, what I can do is um, get um, this group started. Um, in the um, in the other meeting, and so I'll just mute myself for a second um, and be listening, uh, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll jump back in um, after we do the introductions. Okay, so we perhaps could go ahead and have uh, um, Katie McLynn, if she's available, walk us through the language that's in front of us. That's, sure. Okay, and then we'll uh, hear from Coach Christie as soon as he returns. Katie McLynn, Office of Legislative Counsel. Um, so this is a amendment that has several instances of amendment. And since it might not be um, readily apparent in all of them where they are, I'll try to talk you through and give you some context as to where each of these changes are. So the first change is in the section that creates the advisory commission. There's a list of members of the advisory commission and the director of racial equity uh, or the executive director. Um, right now it specifies that that individual will serve as as chair of the advisory commission. So that language is being removed in this proposal. And you'll see language further down that gives the advisory commission the authority to choose a chair and vice chair. Then, oops, thank you. I forgot I didn't have control of the document. <laughs> uh, a little bit more, Colleen, please. Great. Um, so this second instance of amendment um, is also in the section on the advisory council. And this is in the subsection that discusses the duties of the advisory council. Um, so there has been, this is subdivision one. And so the underlying language has been removed and there's a new subdivision one, but it is very similar to the previous subdivision one. Um, and this directs that the advisory council is to provide guidance on the development of the Office of Health Equity. So it makes it clear um, that, that an office will be created in the future. It's, it's less of a hypothetical office and more that something that will be created. Um, I think the original language said provide preliminary guidance. So this says provide guidance on the development of the Office of Health Equity, um, which shall be established based on the advisory commission's recommendations. And this language is new as soon as, it, as, soon as fiscally practicable to do so. So this is kind of giving a timeline for when this office will take place. When, when there is money to do it, that's when this um, office will come into being. And then this subdivision A had been um, kind of part of, um, sub, uh, of the lead in language in one, and I just bumped it down to be part of the list, structure, responsibilities, and jurisdiction. But in concept, it is the same. Um, language just kind of redesignated, and then the rest of the items in that list have been redesignated um, to have new letters as a result that A has bumped down from subdivision one. So the third instance of amendment, thank you, um, is also in the section on the advisory commission, and we're still um, looking at language that has the responsibilities of the commission, and this has two new responsibilities of the commission. And subdivision five 
advise the Department of Health on any funding decisions relating to eliminating health disparities and promoting health equity, including the distribution of federal monies related to COVID-19. And in subdivision six, to the extent funds are available for the purpose, distribute grants that stimulate the development of community-based and neighborhood-based projects that will improve the health outcomes of individuals who are in Black, Indigenous, and persons of color, individuals who are LGBTQ and individuals with disabilities. And then we're renumbering the existing subdivision five to be numerically correct, meaning we're making that subdivision seven. Um, so we're kind of inserting these two new ones in between subdivisions four and seven. Next is the fourth instance of amendment. This section is also in the advisory commission. And this is the language that I referenced previously. So we're striking the existing subdivisions two and three and replacing them to give um, what the effect is that the advisory commission has a little bit more authority um, over its own organization. So the advisory commission shall select a chair and vice chair at its first meeting and annually thereafter, instead of um, having the legislation designate who the chair will be. And then in subdivision three, the advisory commission is to adopt procedures to govern its proceedings, including voting procedures and how the staggered terms shall be apportioned among members. Previously, the section listed um, what the quorum would look like. Um, so instead we're saying that the commission is to decide its own voting procedures. Um, and then in subdivision, excuse me, not subdivision, in the fifth instance of amendment, uh, we're no longer in the advisory commission section. We're now in the section of the bill that lists the duties of the executive director of racial equity. And if you remember, we added a duty to reflect the fact that the executive director was taking on the responsibility of um, heading up this new advisory commission. And in that language, it said that the executive director would be chairing um, this group. And because the, the executive director is no longer chairing, that language is being taken out and inserting in Luther of the establishment of, and I need to pull up the language to give you what that whole phrase would look like. Um, I don't have that at my fingertips. Oh, here we go. So, that sentence would read, there we go. Uh, temporarily, so the lead in language, um, well, this is a list of the of responsibilities and it says including. And so this language in subdivision four would now read, temporarily overseeing the establishment of the Health Equity Advisory Commission established pursuant to the cross-reference until an Office of Health Equity is established. And that is the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to see if Coach Christy, if Representative Christy is you said you would be listening. I'm sure you're trying to do many things at once. Uh, are you available to come back with us and share some of your thoughts in asking for this amendment? I see, yep, there's Coach Chrissy still on the screen. Coach, are you able to hear us? And I see that Katie's had to jump off so that uh, There, Coach, you're lit up on my screen, so I'm guessing that you may be able to hear us as well as join us to make some comments. Let's see, I don't know if we're struggling with our technology or... Let me see if... Hello, Representative Lippert. There Sorry, you are. I had to, had to finish a presentation. <laughs> uh, so Katie McLinn just walked us through the amendment, mm -hmm. through these sections of the amendment, and I'm inviting you to comment on uh, your desire to have the amendments put forward. Um, 
I guess very, very quickly, and you know, I appreciate the committee's time, uh, but being one of the original sponsors of the bill, uh, I just noticed that it looked like we for, uh, missed a piece because in the original discussions about the bill, uh, as we presented it, it was this version. Uh, so the amendment basically is bringing us back to our original thought for the bill itself. So it, it was more like technical correction. You know, it was just an oversight from my observation. And, and if I may, uh, I might say that uh, while that several of those issues were brought to my attention, I, uh, particularly around the, in the original bills introduced, there was language that the commission would elect its own chair and vice chair, et cetera. Uh, and that got changed. And I take some responsibility for that in the press of drafting a new version. Uh, I had mistakenly remembered that the chair of the Office of Health Equity was in fact the chair of the commission, which is not Act, was not accurate, and so, so I, I, I suggested substituting the chair, the chair be the chair of Office of Racial Equity, who is now a member. Um, and so, in that particular point, let me say that that as soon as it was pointed out to me, I understood what that choice was, and that in our interest of quote empowering members of the commission, as we've talked about, that it made sense to return that to the commission to determine its own chair and vice chair. And similarly, uh, when it was brought to my attention as well, that there was not a process for naming the staggered terms that were in the bill uh, that had been brought to my attention by the Government Operations Committee Chair. Uh, and this seemed to resolve that issue as well as the quorum issue by letting the commission, in fact, resolve those issues. And I think that's consistent with what your concerns were, Coach Christie, is that correct? Yes. Um, you know, it, like you said, in the crush, and as we all know, it, it's been uh, pretty intense the last few days um, coming up with crossover and the big bill and then the capital bill uh, on top of our own bills as committee, you know, members as well. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a test of one's serenity, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I think, and I'm hoping in all fairness, everyone uh, would uh, uh, see that this is a, a, a reasonable way to address uh, all of our concerns. Uh, around the best possible bill to leave the body. Uh, yeah, and if I may make, again, because Coach and I have had these conversations and I know he's pressed for time, I'm wanting to just find a way to balance all this, but mm -hmm. um, there was, and I, I see the language around the grant making as clarifying what was in fact mm -hmm. the intent to have the commission involved in grant making. Uh, and I think the language, one could infer that from previous language, but this makes it clear. Yes. Uh, there's been a question raised as to whether this in any way affects the appropriation of the, the attached to the bill, and the answer is no. Not, there's, there's, no there's no impact of any of these amendments on, on anything around the appropriation, uh, as far as I can see. Okay. Uh, Representative Black? Thank you. Um, I just, there was, there's one piece of it that just sort of um, struck me and it was in regards to, it should be set up as soon as fiscally practicable. I'm just remembering that we took testimony from the director of racial equity and she, she made a point that we need that we should not rush rush the process that we should give the um, 
commission all the time that they needed to make the right decisions and that they shouldn't be under pressure. And, and I mean, it's the word fiscally that I'm kind of hanging up on because it might be correct time fiscally to do it, but is it the, it has the process taken enough time to really be practicable? Again, it's a little tough with not having coach right on the screen, but uh, coach, would you well, like, well, me, I, I, you like I to think, comment or would you like me to comment? Go ahead. Well, my, my thought would be being that we've, addressed, um, you know, trying to make sure that the affected community members that are participating in this hybrid level commission, which is, is self-directed, it, it's, it's not the way we usually set things up, but it's the way that allows for that level of flexibility because it is self-directed. Um, you know, they're setting their leadership, they're setting their agenda, and the only critical timeline is the final report, you know, back to the legislature, you know, in, but as far as the work that they're doing, they're working within the confines of, you know, their ability to pull their additional resources together and things of that sort. Like if they, if we um, are able to infuse, you know, enough funds to do what the estimated, you know, uh, expenditures might be, we designed it in such a way that if they have a public-private partnership, for example, like we've done in some other instances, they can expand upon the level of their work as far as the number of meetings and things of that sort in covering those stipends. At least that's my, you know. And if, if I may, I believe that uh, in the language of the, um, in the language of the bill, it calls for the commission helping to design and recommend implementation of the Office of Health Equity. So I, I would think that they have they they clearly have a voice in that office not being established uh, in any premature manner. Uh, exactly. Contrary to what their recommendation would be. That's. So. Representative Goldman. I, it's interesting because I was struggling with the same language as fiscally practicable, and I'm just not sure I understand what that means yet. Um, who? So it's the advisory commission that decides it's fiscally fiscally practicable. Where does that decision come from? What has to be in place, I guess, for it to be practicable? You know, I, I would I would think that it's consensus, you know, on the part of, com of the commission. You know, we put together a group very similar to this this fall, and it represented all 14 counties and all of the affected parties. May I follow up? Yeah, may, may I add as well that one of the parties would be the legislature, because yeah. in fact, if there's if there's funds required from the legislature, uh, the commission is called upon to make recommendations about their continued work, and th there would need to be the, the legislature, if that's the funding source, would need to be a partner in determining what's fiscally mm. um, practicable. May I ask another question regarding this original um, recommendation was through the Department of Health. Is, so is that what we're, I mean, I just was trying to understand how that fit together. 
because they backed out for obvious reasons, but then maybe they'll back in. And I'm, I'm just trying to get my head around this fiscally practicable thing. Well, well I, I think we created an opportunity for them to do the right thing <laughs> by design. Um, you know, with the crush of everything going on, especially with COVID right now, um, even though looking forward, it's hard to look forward sometimes when you're in the middle of, you know, this battle, you know, especially around time and effort and resources. Uh, so basically, we stood this up, um, you know, as the legislature. Um, on behalf of Vermonters. And, you know, obviously once uh, that was uh, brought to their attention in that light, it was, oh, I think we can work with this. And then having the resources that they've come to know, especially over the past few months, working with the affected communities and with the Office of Racial Equity they've come to also realize that they have more resources available to them than they realized before as well. At least that's my observation. Thanks, Coach. Representative Page. Uh, yes, just a couple of comments. Um, I personally like the idea that somebody's in charge at the very beginning, such as, um, the director of racial equity. I do not like the idea where we're leaving it to uh, the commission to, to start things off. And, and um, I'll just leave that point there. Um, the, the other item I have is if this commission or if this health equity um, director, if this becomes an independent office, um, Yes, it should advise the Department of Health, but I think also the General Assembly should also be included, as well as the health care so, as well. So uh, do we have those, any other... those would be my two points uh, yeah. regarding this amendment. Thank you. Yes. And I believe the language sets it up so that they do advise the General Assembly as well. Uh, Coach Christie, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I was in agreement with you. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh, other questions Bill? for Coach before these? Yes. Uh, just, uh, um, you know, back uh, to representatives, uh, the starting off piece. Um, the Office of Racial Equity um, is present, you know, at the beginning. It's just, she's not running the show. You know, that's, that's the other thing. You know, she's helping facilitate because that's, you know, who the office is and how uh, it, it works. We're not directing that in order to imply the self-direction of the commission. Mm -hmm. and, and we provide the Office of Racial Equity with the additional $180,000 of resource to uh, contract with someone or persons to assist in that process. Further questions? Okay. Thank you, Coach, and I thank you for making time in the midst of, I know for you is a very busy multitasking day. So um, I think if there are no further questions right now, we could have you get back to your other responsibilities as well. And we're actually, the floor I think has started, but we should try to bring some closure, I think before, uh, if possible, before going to the floor. Uh, so I would, 
I mean, I think we're at the point where if there's if there's further discussion, we should have it. If not, we should uh, entertain a motion on the amendment, uh, either to support it or not to support it, and then uh, proceed to a vote. I will make uh, a motion that we support the amendment just presented, although I don't have a number. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I think we can find that. Yeah. Representative Barros, Burrows, I'm sorry, Burrows. We're going to ask you how to pronounce your last name so we do it properly. It's the verb. Burrows. Burrows. Burrow under. Burrow under. Got it. Got it. Thank you. No, I don't have a question. I just was raising my hand in support. I, oh. I'm supposed to be talking on the amendment that's being presented right now. Oh. Okay, so let's move this forward then. Uh, so we have a motion to support the amendment as presented by Representative Christie. Um, People are ready for that. So I would ask by a show of hands, those who support the amendment as presented. Okay. And uh, those who are opposed. Okay, great. But well, we have, uh, somebody figure out the numbers. Eight, two. Eight, two, one, right? One. Eight, two, one. Okay, great. Thank you all. And um, I would encourage you to join the floor as soon as you can. Sorry that we ran late into the floor. And